Each turn, there are several phases. We have the event phase, recruitment phase, tactical phase, combat phase, retirement phase, and end of turn. So we'll begin with the event phase, and this only occurs on the commander's turn. And again, our commander is the player here on the left. So we will draw an event and read it, and ouch, right away, Venom strikes. So we move the event track up by one and see the mission for the effects. Wow, that is rough start. Move our event track one forward and check for any effects. In step one of the event track, Venom has activated the red control cube. This reward card no longer provides its bonus to players, but it's still worth victory points for the player who captured it. Well, we haven't even gone yet, and if we get the red control cube, it will not help us. Already at the beginning of the game. Again, very rough start. Also in the event phase, we check to see if there are any global effects that take place during the event phase. The only place that that would occur would be on any of these Venom leaders, so we have to check to see if they have any global events that take place right now during the events phase. And we do have one here at Toxin on the Venom Air Dominator zone. And here's Toxin. And the global effect during the event phase says retire a number of cards from the recruitment deck equal to the number of players. Ugh, that's terrible. We have two players and Toxin is going to force two retirements. So we're going to retire Rex, which stinks because I like that card. And we're going to retire, oh no, Bowser and Pit also. Wow, that's rough. We're gonna have to go after Toxin quick Otherwise, he's going to eat away at our recruitment deck. And it may be a tall deck, but it's significant because if this deck runs out, you don't replenish it. That's it. There's no more assets to be gained then. It doesn't end the game, but it also limits you because you no longer have new cards to recruit coming in to help build your decks. I was a little premature on that discard. This needs to go over here in the active event. When the next event is drawn, then it will go down to the event discard pile. That ends the event phase. We will now move into the recruitment phase so we can purchase cards from the training ground. And what you're going to do is you're going to play each card from your hand by placing them in front of you, face up, one at a time. And when you play a card, you resolve its abilities before playing the next card. And there are some things to keep in mind when you're playing your cards. Because if they have any supporting abilities, well, let me grab one of these here out of the training ground. It makes a little bit more sense. You see it has supporting abilities here with hollow point in the tactical phase. You can use those supporting abilities in the proper phase. So if you have any cards that help during the recruitment phase, you can use those abilities. But if you use a supporting ability, that card cannot be used as a combat leader during the combat during this player's turn. You can choose not to use supporting abilities if they're on there, which would make that card eligible to be the combat leader. Again, this will all makes sense when we get into those phases for the first time and a couple times that we go through it. If you do use those abilities, the card can still enter combat as freedom support. It just cannot be the combat leader. And then another thing to keep in mind is if you use a supporting ability, you have to use all of that card's supporting abilities in the appropriate phases, of course. So it's very important that you not only decide whether or not to use supporting abilities, but what order you play the cards in your hand. That's not a very big deal here in the beginning because while well, we have our recruits and commandos. And the recruits and commandos only have supporting abilities that take place during the tactical phase. Nothing that takes place during the recruitment phase. So we'll play each of our cards. In this case, I'll play two commandos and three recruits from my hand. 
any of the cards that I played, I can add up their recruitment points. And the recruitment points on the cards, for example, this commando, the stripes here, this one has one recruitment point. And our recruit has two recruitment points. So we add all those up, two, four, six, eight. We have eight recruitment points to spend on the training ground. And to see if we have enough, we'd look at each card and we can spend up to eight. For example, if we wanted to purchase hollow point, the dog tag symbol here shows you how much it costs to recruit from the training ground. In this case, we could get a hollow point because it costs eight. So I'm gonna take a look and see which card I want to recruit. In this case, I'll only be able to recruit one. These both cost eight and the remaining ones cost five each, and I don't have enough to buy more than one card during this turn. And in this case, I'm going to choose to use all eight of my points to recruit Hollow Point. And I'm doing that because she has a couple of good support abilities here. In the tactical phase, she will choose and discard one Venom Support Soldier, which can be very helpful. And in the Arctic Zone, she can cause discard one additional Venom Support Soldier. And that is an important thing because we have Taiwaz here who is causing us a bunch of grief by making all the other leaders stronger because he is in an Arctic Zone. And that means that Hollow Points will give me a better shot at taking him out, hopefully in the near future. When you recruit a card, you'll place it in your discard pile. I can no longer make any more purchases. This does not get filled back up immediately. And we will move into the tactical phase. Even though they've already been played, I placed the five cards back in the card holder just so you can see them on screen. Now, if I wanted to here in the tactical phase, I could choose, like I said, to attack a leader. For example, if I chose Taiwaz, I would Note that his health is four and his defense is three. And I would move the sliders to reflect that. I would look to see if anything took place during the tactical phase on that Venom leader. And here we have, if he was in a sea space, he would get plus two to defense. If he was in an air space, he would get plus two to his support. He's in neither of those spaces so we don't have to worry about it if we were to attack. Then I would also check to see if there was any global effects that take effect during the tactical phase on any of the other leaders. And in this case, we have the Venom Commander who has a global effect during the tactical phase. All other leaders gain plus one to their support. So when we went to draw support, Taiwaz would get a plus one because of the Venom Commander being in play. After all that is done, I would choose which one of my cards I would have as my combat leader. Again, if they used support abilities during the recruitment phase, they could not be the combat leader. Using recruitment points to recruit from the training grounds is okay. Using the recruitment points does not stop you from making that card a leader. After I chose the leader, I could choose which cards were going to participate in combat, and then there's a lot more steps that go into place, but we'll do that when we do a combat. Instead of going through them all right now, there's, you know, you're placing dice, and I'll go over the symbols and things like that at that time. Also, you may hear a raging storm in the background, so if you hear rain or thunder, that's my crazy Florida weather taking place during my filming. After everything would have been set up, then I would go into the combat phase. I'm going to skip it because I'm not going into the tactical phase because I definitely don't want to attack anybody. I have nothing available. It would be foolish at this time. Next, we would go into the retirement phase. I can choose one card from my current cards in play if I wanted to. Don't want to do that quite yet. But that's a good time to start getting rid of your lesser valued cards as you build your hand. That way your good cards occur more often. And finally, we'll go into the end of turn phase. 
First we'll check to see if any global effects take place during the end of turn phase. And in this case, none of the leaders out there have a global effect that takes place during the end of turn phase. We would discard any cards that the Venom leader had in support over here to the discard pile. We'd return these markers back to the left at their current position. The event track would stay in place. We would refill any of these empty zones with either reward cards or Venom leaders or both if necessary until these decks would be empty. And now we would also refill the training ground, which we'll go ahead and do. And we will gain Striker. All right, that's another soldier that will be available at the cost of nine. Also, if at any time this would have more than five cards in it because of a, an ability or an effect, it would just have more than five cards in it. And then we would prepare for the next round by discarding all the cards that we played. And they would go into our discard pile, draw five new cards from our deck. And there should only be five remaining because you start with ten, and that is correct. And we will have three recruits and two commandos. We don't shuffle the discard pile now. We only shuffle it when we have to draw a card from our draw deck and there's nothing in it. Then play would continue clockwise. In this case, it would be over here for our player to the right. Our second player will now go, and normally we would have the event phase, but that only occurs when we have the commander taking their turn. So in this case, we'll skip over the event phase and go right into the recruitment phase. I believe this keeps us from having to deal with Toxin here, because he has the global effect during the event phase. It says retire a number of cards from the recruitment deck equal to the number of players. But in this case, I don't think we have to do that because it says in the rulebook that only the commander begins their turn with the event phase. All other players skip this phase and begin with the recruitment phase. So therefore, we don't have to check for global effects in the event phase, which would mean the toxin does not take effect. We'll go ahead and play each card from our hand. We have three commandos. They have one recruitment point each, so that'll give us three. And we have two recruits, each with two points. So that'll give us a total of seven. With only seven recruitment points, that's going to limit our options because Striker is nine and Nightshade is eight. So we have Sledge, the Drawbridge Vehicle, and Selkie available. I'm going to choose to take Selkie for five because we have here, during the combat phase, we can look at the top card from my draw deck, add its combat value to the rolled value of one combat die then discard that card. If I'm on a C space, I can repeat the process for another combat die. We have two C spaces, the captured oil rig and the underwater station, so she would come in quite useful there. I was debating between her and Sledge, because Sledge adds plus one to the world value of all combat die. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make the choice, go with Selkie. I'll put her into my discard pile. I don't have enough recruitment points left over, so we'll end the recruitment phase. I'm not going to attack any of the Venom leaders yet, so we'll skip over the tactical and combat phases and go right into the retirement phase, where I'm not going to retire any of my cards. So we'll go into the end of turn phase, apply any global effects or other abilities that take place during this phase. I don't have anything out there as far as global effects for the end of turn. There are no empty zones, so we'll refill our training ground, and we're gonna have a vehicle, the Scorpion. Oh, very nice, during the tactical phase it gets two combat points, that's good. And it's a low cost to recruit, only three. Might have to pick that up. And then we'll discard the cards that I played, place them here with Selkie in my discard pile, draw my new hand of five. 
again there should only be five there and we're going to have one commando and four recruits this player's turn is done we now go back to the commander which means we will do the event phase let's see what the event has in store for us well it's not a venom strike freedom's night out with a quiet night ahead of them, Freedom Squadron decides to take a night out on the town and have some fun at the local clubs. At the end of the night, the squadron feels more bonded, having spent non-combat time with each other, learning a bit more about one another and their pasts. All is quiet. That's a nice card to get early on. That will become our active event. We'll discard that Venom Strikes card down here into the event discard pile. We do have an event phase global effect, so we have to deal with Toxin again, which means we have to retire two cards for two players, and we're going to have to retire one of our Patriot vehicles and Sandbar. We'll have to make it a priority to go after Toxin. Toxin's pretty tough. I don't know if we'll be able to do it until we have some more powerful cards in our hands. We'll go into our recruitment phase. We have two commandos worth one each and three recruits worth two each. So that's going to give us six, seven, eight recruitment points. We do have this scorpion vehicle here. I could afford nightshade, but I think what I'm going to do is to build up some cards quicker and I have eight points. I'll purchase Sledge for five and the Scorpion for three. Those both will move into my discard pile. These beginning turns are going pretty quick until we actually start doing some combat. With the five cards that I played, there's nothing really effective here to start an attack on any of the Venom leaders. So I will skip the tactical and combat phase, go into retirement. And this time in the retirement phase, I think I'll get rid of one of my commandos. The commandos can lead an attack, but they're only worth one recruitment point. Kind of clogging up the hand. So I will retire one of my commandos over to the retirement pile. Nothing occurred up here that we need to clean up here in the end of turn phase. I'll discard my hand. Refill the training grounds, and we're going to see General Steel. Pretty nice card. If General Steel is chosen as a combat leader, his combat value is equal to the number of Freedom Squadron soldiers in combat, including himself. And we have another vehicle, the Sawfish. Tactical phase, it's got one combat value, but if it's on the water, it's a plus two. So this would be a really good card for this player to have over here because they have Selkie. We can really use the Sawfish and her if we can get them in a hand together to go after some of these C zones. So I need to shuffle these up because I'm out of draw cards and draw a new hand. I've given my deck a good mix. I'll do a, another couple quick shuffles on camera and draw a new hand of five. Move those to the side. Let's see what we have. Oh, we got one of our cards. We got Hollow Point. So we might be able to go after that Arctic Zone. We have a Commando. We have our Scorpion. That'll give us plus two in the tactical phase. Good recruitment points too. And then we got two recruits. It's our second player's turn. We will skip the event phase because they are not the commander. We will go into the recruitment phase. We'll play the cards in our hand, which are, we have four of the recruits worth two points each, and one commando worth one, giving us nine. So let's take a look and see what we have available for nine. We can purchase any single card, or if we purchase the sawfish for three, we can get one of these cards for five also. Or we could go for Striker here for 9. 
I think it would make more sense to go for the sawfish since we have, I believe, Selkie in this deck. And that gives us a better shot at attacking any of the Venom leaders that are in sea zones. So we'll definitely take the sawfish, place that in our discard pile. And do we want Drawbridge or General Steel? Well, let's see what we have here. Drawbridge. Before the Venom Leader's abilities take effect, treat this combat as if it were in any single zone type you choose. That could be useful. Or we have General Steel. If General Steel is chosen as a combat leader, his strength is equal to the number of Freedom Squadron soldiers in combat, including himself. The drawbridge would come in useful for turning anything into a C zone for this deck. But General Steel is also a good leader for leading an attack. And we're going to have to start attacking soon. I'm going to go for General Steel. We're in no position to attack quite yet. This is still the first trip through our deck, so we'll skip the tactical and combat phases, go into retirement, and I will do the same here, discarding one commando, or retiring one commando, sorry. Go into the end of turn phase, there's no global effects, there was no combat, nothing is empty except for the training ground, which we'll refill right now. And we're going to get Predator. Predator? Not exactly sure how to say that. Recruitment phase. Retire one soldier from your hand to reveal the top card of the recruitment deck. If the real card is a soldier, add it to your hand, otherwise retire it. Tactical phase. One combating pitmaster. Well, pitmaster is not one of the leaders for Venom. At least not yet. He may be in the draw stack. It's a pretty solid score for a leader, though. And we're also going to have available Freedom Bastion. When this card is recruited, it remains in front of you, in effect, and does not count as in play. Recruitment phase. Soldier in the training ground costs one less. Well, that definitely could be useful. Glad that didn't get retired. We'll discard our hand, give it a shuffle, and draw five new cards. We've shuffled our deck, give it another quick mix, and draw five. Put our draw deck down. Let's see what we ended up with. We have a recruit, a recruit. We got Selkie, so maybe on our turn we'll go after one of those C spaces. We have a commando that can lead the attack, and another recruit. Not a whole lot of power there, but maybe we can make it work. That will send it back over to our commander, player one. And we have to do the global effect for Toxin before we draw our event, which means we have to retire two cards. Ambush. And Sparks. Man, we're really having to get rid of a lot of cards here. We need to take care of Venom. We'll draw our new event. Oh, it's not a Venom Strikes. Space, above and beyond. With construction completed on the new Farseer Space Station, Freedom Squadron sets themselves up to defend its launch and activation from Venom. Another all is quiet. We can go ahead and discard that active one and put space above and beyond as the active event. All is quiet. Now we'll go into our recruitment phase and we'll play the cards from our hand here. So we have our two recruits worth two recruitment points each for four. We have our commando, it's worth one. The scorpion, which is worth three which is very nice. And we have Hollow Point, which we may use as a support in order to use these abilities. If we go to an Arctic Zone, we can make Venom discard two of their support soldiers, which can really help us out. 
and she is worth three recruitment points also. All of my support abilities in my hand take place during the tactical phase, so we don't have to worry about that right now, but we do have 11 recruitment points. So we need to make some purchases here. I think drawbridge may come in handy too, because I could turn things into an arctic zone. And if I have hollow point available, that really helps. That one cost five, which would only leave me with six, and then I could get nothing else. So I should go for one of the higher point ones at this time. Striker or Predator? I'm going to take Striker for nine. Put that into my discard pile. And this will take us into the tactical phase if we want to attack. So I would have to choose which leader I wanted to go after. An Arctic Zone would be the smartest move. So we have Taiwaz and Rojas and Azur. I think it would make more sense to go after Taiwaz here because the global effect of being in the Arctic gives all other Venom leaders plus one health and plus one defense. It would not apply to him because he's not all other. This might be my chance to go after him. But we do have to remember the Venom commander has a global effect during the tactical phase that gives all other Venom leaders plus one on their uh, Venom support. His is a three right now, which would be a four then. And Venom Support is how many cards they draw from this deck here to go into the Venom Support area to help them out. And since we don't know what they are, it could really shift the balance. But we do have Hollow Point, who allows us to discard a Venom Support Soldier, and if we're in the Arctic, we get to do one additional Venom Support Soldier. So as long as they get a couple of soldiers, we can get rid of them. If they get a bunch of vehicles, that's going to hurt us. So I'm going to look at the numbers and see if I can mount a successful attack here. I think it's going to be very difficult to beat Taiwaz because he has a health of four. I would need four successes at a minimum because I still don't know what he's going to get in support, which can add to his health and defense. And I'm only going to get to roll at most six dice. And I know I haven't explained how that works yet, but to get four successes on six dice and it may end up being five or six successes and they may end up reducing my dice depending on what their support are. I just don't think the odds are with me. As much as I want to attack, I don't think I am going to be able to this time. And I don't want to attack one of the other ones because Taiwaz will give them a plus one health and plus one defense. So even if I went up here to Rojas and Azura, they would start with a three and a three in their health and defense and a three in their support because of the Venom Commander. Man, this is a tough draw that I got here. And you have to defeat them twice. And I have no idea what's in my deck because what happens is if you beat them the first time, you discard your hand, they discard their support, they draw new support and you draw a new five card hand and put it into play and I don't think I have much else in here yet other than hollow point and the scorpion which I have already in my hand I'm gonna have to not attack this time so we'll skip the tactical phase and the combat phase and go into retirement I already retired one commando from this deck which means I only have three remaining in the deck so I'll keep it in there for now. I'm not going to retire anymore at this time. That'll move us into the end of turn phase. We need to refill the training ground. And this time we'll get Corporal Carnage. Wow, he looks kind of familiar. He got demoted. He used to be a sergeant whenever I watched the cartoons. Combat phase, add plus two to the rolled value of all combat dice. Wow. That's a great support ability, but he's an awesome leader, too. Gets five. So that's a tough choice. Either get the five dice for him being the leader, or have him step back to support and add plus two to the rolled value. That can be extremely helpful. That would be a tough choice. And Corporal Carnage costs nine. 
We'll go ahead and discard the cards that we played into our discard pile. Draw five new ones. And we will get a recruit, a commando, two recruits, two commandos, and we got Sledge. Sledge is another one that adds plus one to the rolled value of all dice. And he is a three if he's a leader. So we do have a commando that we can make a leader of two. Recruits can't be leaders because they have a, a zero here. So we might be able to attack. Again, we wouldn't get many dice, so we may have to make Sledge the leader. And that will move play over here. We will skip the event phase. Again, we don't have to deal with Toxin because we're not the commander. There is no event phase. And we'll go into the recruitment phase and play our cards. And we have three recruits that are worth two each. The commando is worth one, so that gives us seven recruit points. And then we have Selkie, who gives us none. Let's see, in combat, ah, that's right. Look at the top card from your draw deck, add its value to the rolled value of one die, and then repeat it if we attack in the, in the water. In one of the C zones, there's two of those. We do have a commando that could be a leader that has the same value as her, but that would not give us very many dice. That's a tough, tough draw there too. But we have seven recruitment points, and that only makes Predator and the Drawbridge available. Again, the Drawbridge can give us an advantage by making any zone a zone of our choice, but he is also a really strong leader. We'll go ahead and purchase him. We'll place him into our discard pile. Let me see if I have a chance at attacking or if it would be foolish. I think it would probably be foolish because they're going to get a plus one to everything thanks to Taiwaz and the Venom Commander. But if I attack in the water, I can add some to my combat dice. Not good. I would only have five dice to roll and I would need to get three, four, maybe even five successes. Still don't have enough cards built up. Well, we'll go ahead and move on. Skip the tactical and combat phases. Go into retirement. I'm not going to retire anything. We will refill our empty training ground with a vehicle. And it's a Hornet. In the recruitment phase, spend five recruitment points to place the top card from the recruitment deck into your discard pile. No matter what it is, that's pretty, pretty useful. Uh, in the tactical phase, I could still get a plus one out of this if I'm attacking in a air zone, which there are two of. It's kind of a blind draw, but it could really pay off. Not bad. We'll discard our hand and draw up a new hand of five. I know there's not a lot of action right now, but it'll be coming soon. Recruit. The Sawfish, General Steel, another Recruit, and a Commando. So the Sawfish, we can attack in a sea zone so we can make him pretty strong. Like if he were to be the combat leader, his strength would be equal to the other soldiers, including himself, which would be four. So he would have a combat strength of four. That would be five, six, seven dice. Plus, if we attack, okay, so we might be able to attack in the next turn for this player. I think we're set up for an attack when we come back to that player, but we have to come back over here to our commander, and we'll have to deal with Toxin again. 